Good afternoon folks and uh, welcome, a very warm welcome, straight in the camera, there we go, there we are, uh, right, what have we got today, uh, this is my latest car boot cell find, this is an ultra group stereo from the 1970s, uh, it has a BSR deck, only came with one speaker unfortunately and it is an original ultra speaker, but uh, unfortunately it only came with one so I will have to find a suitable set of speakers for it a, pair, a set of speakers that match obviously I've got some somewhere uh, I've been buying speakers so I'll have a set that'll be perfect for this I dare say anyway uh, but uh, we're a long way from uh, putting speakers on I've plugged speakers in I've plugged one that came with it and one of my test speakers and uh, we're gonna see I've plugged it into the mains, we're going to see what we actually get and uh, will it work or go bang? Um, I don't know this because like you lot I'm about to find out for the very first time the turntable is a bit on the stiff side so what we'll do just for test purposes we'll give the turntable a little bit of a drink the mat's missing, but that's no problem. We'll give the turntable a little bit of oil. Out! You've been fed and been walked. You were alright till I started making this video. And what we'll do, we'll give it a spin. Just pull that out so I can spin it better. There we are. In fact, what I'll do, I'll actually pull the clip off. If I can find my little screwdriver. Is that a message or is it a YouTube notification? It's a YouTube notification. Oh, it's, it could also be... I also have a message from our friend Steve as well. I'll get back to that in a minute. Because I'm, uh, I don't use the phone for any of that sort of stuff, but it notifies me. But I'm on the, uh, I've got the computer, I've got the monitor switched to another channel at the moment, so I can view the, uh, see what's going into the camera. <coughs> right, I can't find the flat screwdriver. I've got one somewhere. Should be able to get it with this. See if I can get the clip off. We can ch do a few checks. I've got a piece of metal here that'll probably do it. I'll probably not leave this deck in anywhere. I'll probably modernise it. And I've got uh, the BSR out of the bin of tone. I might put that in it because it's been serviced. Right, so that's come off nice and easy. Oh look at that, none of that's seized, oh look at that, that's rare, they're usually seized up, that's not seized. And I've not even touched this yet, the motor's not seized. No. I think it could do with a drink of oil though. Yeah. Let's try and get a bit of oil down there, just down the top bearing will do. Whoops supposed to go down the top bearing it's gone everywhere but I'm not even switch this on yet I don't even know if the damn thing fucking works it might not even work but we'll soon find out in a minute mop this oil up uh, get any oil that was on the pulley I think I've got a bit down there Yeah, that feels better. Yeah, yeah. Idler, nice and rubbery. It will need to be stripped and serviced, obviously, because I do that. I service them, strip them. Look at that, it's still got the protective look at this, folks. Still got the little protective. 
thing in the middle there, look, if I just get this here, look, and just nip this. Now look at that. Fucking turntable's brand new under that, look at it. I might have a mat somewhere for this. But I'm not I probably won't put this in anyway, but let's put the uh, clip in that little cup there so I don't lose it. Ooh. Is that just catching the velocity trip or yeah it must have been yeah it's a bit noisy a bit grunchy spin down's good on it now put the centre spindle back in and the, the thing with these centre spindles when you put them in, always run it through a cycle so the spindle can click into place. Right, well all that seems to work, so without further ado, let's give it a trial run. Don't even know if the stylus is any good. It's got one in it though. Get the clip off there. Yeah, it's got one in, don't know whether it's any good. It's got one in. Are you ready? Uh, that's the treble, the bass, the volume and the balance. Well, we'll get an activity in the speaker. There's. The switches are a bit crackly. So that's a bit squeaky. a tenner but I chipped him down because there was a speaker missing but I would have chipped him down anyway you all know me but yeah I'm, uh, there's no hums well that's the balance the only hum you get is what you expect which is that turn it down it's as silent as an angel's fart nothing there the controls are a bit scratchy, that's no problem. <coughs> Even the little neon light works, and it is a neon in these. Even the neon works. And uh, the the motor in this is actually, the, the amplifier in this is actually fed 
from an overwind on the motor. And the reason why I know that is when you pull this, pull this down, the motor's always running because there's no switch, otherwise it would pop, would pop in the speakers. So there's no, uh, the motor's always running. So it's the amplifier's powered by an overwind from the uh, from the uh, motor. So that's it. That's the uh, that's that's the that, that's my latest purchase, the Ultra Group Stereo uh, record player from uh, I'd say about late sixties, early nineteen seventies, judging by this deck. But saying that, I might put another deck in it. Uh, see how I feel, and we'll see how this one polishes up. If this one polishes up, I'll just stick a mat on here and uh, have done with it, you know. But it will get serviced. I will go through it. You know me, folks. I go through them. Um, you know, I would never send... Although this is all working, I would never send it out uh, without going through it. Because that's my way. Um, you know, because I guarantee the items as well. And, all, you know, there's a bit of nicotine, slight nicotine on the top of the knobs. Uh, we'll get that sorted out. All the knobs will come off and be cleaned. Uh, general general condition of the record player is not bad. The dust cover's got no cracks on. I don't think it has. Let's have a look. Now there's a few marks, but there's no cracks in it. Uh, no cracks in it. That might polish up lovely. Uh, there's a few dings. There's a a burn in it there by the look of it but yeah you know a nice little record player for somebody who wants to play their records and enjoy them you know so you know you can't go wrong with that um, you know the sounds not bad it's got a nice sort of meaty sound the bass is not bad the bass response is pretty good uh, but I will you know it's got a bit of a ding here I'm going to see if I can get that out with the air gun. Uh, see if I can do something about that with the air gun. I might even be able to do something about it without the air gun. Like just lift it up and pull it. Because it's just had a bit of a knock there. And I'll have to use the air gun and glue that down. So I'll have to use the hot air gun for that. To just straighten that little bit out. To get that little kink out of it there where it's had a bit of a knock. But that'll come out, it's coming out now even. So we'll just give it a blast, warm it up and spread it, it'll be alright. The cabinet itself is not bad. Uh, we, won't, we won't look at the chassis now, uh, because uh, I don't want to. Um, we'll look at the chassis later. Um, you know, oh fuck it, why not? Start by examining the plug, I should have done that before I even plugged it in, but I didn't. Let's see what we've got in the way of a fuse. If I can find a flathead screwdriver to get the fucking plug apart. Uh, I've got a sore knee and all, you know, I don't know what I've done to it, but I've done something with my knee and I'm in real pain, you know. And uh, there's a flathead. And what we'll do, we'll, uh, we'll open it up and have a look at this thing together now. Take the record off. Put that back under there. That under there. There we go. And we'll have a look. We'll just see what we've got. Where's my glasses? We'll see what we've got for a fuse. It's got an old style plug on it. It's a, it's a Volex, which is made by Wilex. Uh, it did conform to the British standard at one time, but it doesn't anymore. But... Uh, So before I send it out, the plug will need to be changed. And what have we got? We've got a 3 amp fuse. The earth isn't in there very well. Well, actually, this is probably... Do you know so at the ends of that, the original wire, look, it's... I need to, I need to clip them down, make that a bit better. But uh, actually, the plug's actually not wired too bad. So only the, the only thing I can pull it up on is the earth. Let's check the screws for tightness. 
Yeah, I can get a turn on them, but a little bit of a turn on them, but the live was the tightest out of all of them, and the cord grip is good and tight. So whoever put the plug on knew what they were doing because back in the days when this was made, you bought you didn't get a plug, you had to buy one. Uh, it weren't like today folks where you know any youngsters watching it weren't like today where you know anyone under 40 uh, watching it weren't like today where you you know you bought your thing came with a plug back then the things didn't come with plugs it's unplugged the speakers I'm not taking the stylus out because it's fucked anyway right, manufactured by a British radio corporation limited London England and it tells you how to wire the plug, it tells you how the plug is supposed to be wired. Uh, basic shit like that. It's moving my phone out of the way. And we need the flathead for this because they're actually them daft plastic screws. And we can see If anyone's been in here before me, there's six screws in it. And I expect to find six. I'm not gonna service it right now, I'm just gonna we're just gonna have an, an overview of the chassis. See what it uses for semiconductors. This screw doesn't want to come out. They were always a bit fucking shit, these screws. It's probably been repaired a couple of times this in its life. I mean, let's face it, they all have, haven't they? So, you know, it's ni nicely made, though. I mean, compared to... they make nowadays I mean I mean to be to be perfectly honest if it was a toss-up between one of these or a Crosley cruiser you know I'm gonna go for one of these you can bet your bottom dollar or even your top dollar or if you skint no dollars at all bet your life even that I would actually go for one of these I mean I don't, didn't have to undo the last two screws they've just come out so we'll do something about securing those they, the last two have just come out on their own accord uh, just put that like that for a second because I don't want to lose these two screws because they, they do have to go back in but I'll find some way of getting them in so they're secure what I might do is fill the holes uh, with epoxy or something and re-drill the holes do, I don't know what I'll do, probably something like that or I'll find some sort of you know, uh, something to just fill the holes in with that's nice and clean inside the bottom no sign of any liquid damage Um, now let's have a look at the amplifier. Right, it's got uh, the standard BSR uh, for its deck, as we know. Uh, it's got a fuse in there. And look at this. It's supposed to unplug from here, but it's all been soldered on. But they'll just heat up and pull off. No problem there. In fact, actually, they don't have to because they actually, uh, there's a plug here. Oh, and there's another wire here, wire here. Uh, scrap, shut up. Uh, it has a metal rectifier. Scraps! It's got a load of these uh, Callins caps in it, so we'll probably replace those. 
I would imagine the output is germanium. We've got the power here. Um, you know, uh, not bad really. I mean, I'm looking at the condition of it inside. It's not bad. I've seen worse. Trust me, I've seen a lot worse. And what I like about it is this just pulls off. They just pull off them. Look, edge connector just pulls straight off. So we'll give that a good clean to make sure nothing intermittent is on there. And, you know, that'll get a good clean. And uh, we've got a... Uh, I think that's a... 800 milliamp fuse. We've got uh, some of these yellow capacitors, they're known for failing, so we'll replace those. Uh, there's the smoother, I can't see the other side of it. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, you know, you've got your uh, it actually looks like that you're. Uh, it looks like your secondary, uh, your primary, sorry, goes into the circuit board. It does, but only as far as these two wires here. Doesn't It's actually separate. So we'll have a look at that. Yeah. Yeah, you've got your primary. And that actually goes into two resistors. Here goes into two, uh, they look like 100k resistors. So we'll check those uh, because they're on, the, they're on the primary side, them fuckers. And uh, we've got the secondary which comes into your rectifier here. This is your secondary here, the overwind from your motor. Spit and mechanism on this looks super clean. It will get serviced. Grease is a bit sticky, but not too bad. I've seen worse. Uh, but the mechanism is super clean compared to some of them I've seen. Yeah. In all honesty, folks, I think this was a good purchase. And, you know, it's, uh, yeah. Amplifier comes out by removing one screw down at the bottom there. And another screw, another two screws up the top here then you can withdraw the amplifier, oh and uh, no, 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 them ones there, you take them out later you take them two, that one, that one and one at the bottom then you can withdraw the amplifier the output stage is down here on this heat sink uh, I don't know what we're using for transistors at this point um, don't even know how many transistors is in it, there's a fair few so you know it's actually quite a uh, it's actually quite a nice well made little player. Um, I think so, and I can't believe how super clean it is. I mean they usually, you know they're usually a bit horrible, but this is not this is not bad. And the cable management is not bad. It was all right till I disturbed it. But what we'll do we'll uh, we'll, we'll we'll tack all this back up up here. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> Right, and what we'll do, uh, we'll actually, uh, we'll, we'll, what we'll do, we'll, we'll, we'll actually tack, we'll put a bit of, uh, bit of each ring or tape or something round here, uh, just hold these up out of the way, we'll do something with that, and uh, your speakers are here, left and right speaker, uh, your left ear, your right there. Uh, I don't know how many ohms they are, I don't know what ohms they should be, there's no markings on that speaker I don't think. It would help if there was because there's no markings on this to actually tell you oops, what the impedance is. Let's see if there's anything on the speaker anywhere. I don't think there is, you know. And given that I only got the one speaker, I'm probably going to... Given I only got the one, I'm going to take it apart anyway. And the front on bolts, uh, they look like 9BA bolts or something. Uh, but the front on bolts, I think that, that's actually plastic. That's plastic. 
you can see into there it's actually a plastic box but basically uh, you just to find out what impedance they used I can't get that off without unbolting it so I'm gonna have to unbolt it to get that off and it's a shame really I didn't get the other speaker because it would have been nice to get both of them because that one's in pretty nice nick and it's the original ultra speaker that would have been supplied as well so I need to see what impedance these are mind you I can find out with my meter and we can find out why didn't I think of that in the first place you know I don't have to take the speaker apart do I I'm not with it today folks I'm really not I'm a bit on the tired side to be perfectly honest so let's just put the meter on and see how many ohms the speaker is and then we'll know them won't we and this speaker wire was far too long someone's obviously joined it and forgive my belly for showing so oh pardon me whoops What? That can't be right. That can't be right. I say it's 28 fucking ohms. That can't be right. That can't be right at all. Unless this fucking. Let's clean the crap off this fucking. Make sure the fucking. Yeah, I don't understand that. 28 fucking ohms, bollocks. Not a 28 ohm fucking speaker. I mean, they did come out with some funny impedances back in the day, but I think that's fucking stretching it. Yeah, it's coming up as 18 ohms, so probably 15 ohms. I'm just trying to clean the crap off the plug. So, yeah, probably 15 ohms. Probably 15. Yeah, 15 ohms. So it's a 15 ohm speaker, folks. So I'm gonna have to find a I'm gonna have to find a set of 15 ohm speakers to put on it or as near the only I think the only impedance I've got is eight and they could probably use those but you know I like to put the I like to put like for like on it's a shame really the other speakers missing it really is because that, that would have been brilliant because I wouldn't have had to have thought about it then but uh, I wouldn't have even need to have tested the speaker either because it wouldn't have mattered because if they're with it then if they're the right ones for it, then they're going to be the right value. But uh, unfortunately, I only got one of these. So, you know, and you can't just sell it with one. So I'll have to find, I'll have to find a 15, a set of 15 ohms to go with it. Which I don't think will be a great issue. Uh, anyway, I'm going to leave it there, folks, because my knee is absolutely playing me up. Uh, not often I complain, but yeah, it is. Um, you know, really, really, I'm in agony with it, to be perfectly honest. I don't know what I've fucking done. I think I banged it the other night when I was pissed. I don't fucking know, I can't remember. Anyway, folks, but that's the Ultra. Uh, that's, as I say, that's the Ultra uh, group stereo from the early 70s, late 60s, early 70s. Not exactly sure when, but we know it works, so it needs a service, and I need to just go through it really, get them, uh, get them Callens capacitors out, and get some proper decent ones in, and uh, you know, and that will uh, 
will obviously prolong its life as well. Uh, but what I'll do, I'll put match capacitors in. I'll actually test the capacitors and match them so that the uh, so that I don't disturb the balance of the balance of the amplifiers. So I'll get roughly. Uh, so we might even see some use of the scope and the signal generator in the in the in the upcoming video as well. Anyway, folks, you all take care. Have a brilliant Sunday, and uh, I shall catch you later. And oh, bye for now.